Hello, fellow Rebel Capitals. Hope you're well. So I wanted to share a story that I think illustrates the direction that the United States is headed. And unfortunately, due to my last trip in the United States, I'm more concerned about the United States from a social standpoint than I am an economic standpoint. And uh, let's get right into this Zero Hedge article, and I'll tell you exactly what I'm referring to. Then at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you what my personal experience was like. And uh, the reason I think this is important is because it's one thing if you're an American that's living in the United States, it's like looking at yourself in the mirror every single day. But if you leave the United States like I do for long periods of time, it's like instead of looking at yourself in the mirror every day, it's like looking at yourself in the mirror once every two years. You can see dramatic changes where if you're looking at yourself every day, you don't notice those changes that are happening right under your nose. So I think I'm going to give you some very good insights here. But before we get into that, and also I want to hear a story from Josh in his recent trip back to the United States in Massachusetts, right around the Boston area. This is going to completely blow your mind. But before we get into that, let's go right into this Zero Hedge article. New York City shoplifting has a shoplifting problem and kiosks aren't going to stop it. So this is just completely insane. You guys know, and I'm sure have heard about this, pretty much this epidemic with shoplifts lifting in the United States. So if you're looking for evidence of the United States moral decline, look no further. I know a lot of people, they all, George, you always talk about this doom and gloom stuff. Hey, let, don't shoot the messenger, my friend. You know, Don't get mad at me. Get mad at the yield curve. Don't get mad at me. Just get mad at the, the facts, the stories. Get mad at these people that are stealing uh, at, at Target, shoplifting at Target to the tune of $1.3 billion last year. We're going to dive into that in, in, in more detail here. But, well, actually, let's go right into that. Crime-battered retail giant, giant Target said it expects to suffer as much as a $1.3 billion hit to its bottom line because of theft and organized crime. I mean, let that sink in a moment. And it reminds me of a tweet that Zero Hedge did the other day where they are talking about how this has really led to increased uh, purchasing power. And I mean, it's, it's sad, but if people are stealing $1.3 billion worth of stuff that they otherwise would have purchased from Target, that gives them $1.3 billion to spend at bars and restaurants. So I'm not saying that there's a causal component there, but it's definitely a head scratcher. But more importantly, this just goes to show you that the social decay that I'm talking about in the United States, and you guys might not even be cognizant of it, because again, it's like looking at yourself in the mirror every single day. So they go on to say that considering that Target voiced its full-throated support for BM, okay, so now they go into the irony here, and I think Target deserves a little bit of uh, told you so. So let's go over how the New York mayor tends to crack down on shoplifting. And this is courtesy of Wall Street Silver on Twitter. So first-time offenders will have an intervention program. There will be de-escalation training for retail employees. Like, really? You're going to pay me 15 bucks to, to try to dive in front of some you know, criminal, some thug that's trying to steal stuff. Yeah. Who knows if he has a knife? Who knows if he's high on drugs? Who knows if he has a gun? Yeah. I don't think so. Established neighborhood retail watch groups to share theft info in real time uh, with one another and the New York PD. Okay. There's something that's, that's reasonable, but let's look at this last one. Install kiosks in stores to connect would-be thieves with social service programs. And like I said in my tweet when I sent this out, it's like, how many thieves do you think are going to stop their stealing when they see a kiosk 
in Target for a social service program. And this is ridiculous. This is it, this is just completely insane. But if you haven't seen what is actually going on, here's some some videos. And you don't even need to hear the audio to see this. This is going on all over the United States. Look at this. And they're, they're filming him. They're with the, their cameras. And this is the security guard. <laughs> I mean... I don't know how old you guys are that are on the live stream right now, but I'm 50 years old. So I think I would be considered Gen X. I tell you what, and you guys that are my age can vouch for this. And in case the, the, the millennials don't know this, maybe the Gen Zers, they think that this is normal. No, this is not normal. In fact, let me tell you, if you would have done something like that back in the 1980s, or even in the 1990s, that dude would have been annihilated before he got to the front door. Because there would have been about 50 dudes in this drugstore, Walgreens, whatever, that would have tackled that guy and beat the living hell out of him. And I'm not exaggerating. The fact that now... This guy can just roll right out of this Walgreens or CVS or whatever the hell it is, right in front of other patrons and the security guard. The security guard was there. What did he do? Did he take a swing at the guy? Did he tackle the guy? No. He just tried to like <laughs> grab his stuff. And while he was filming him with his iPhone, I mean, th this is absolutely insane and it's not just this one video i mean you can go online and see video after video after video of this exact same thing you got this guy who's been in the news i think this is the same dude has been in the news re uh, recently he's a famous tiktoker and he basically got a lot of subscribers by going into walmart and just stealing stuff just and, and then filming it and putting it up on tiktok for heaven's sakes I mean, think about that. Go back to the 1980s. Go back to the 1990s. If you had been stealing, you would be ashamed of that. You wouldn't be broadcasting it on, on uh, TikTok, for heaven's sakes. I mean, the, you want to talk about moral decay. Again, am I being hyperbolic? Well, I'll let you be the judge. The evidence is right here. You guys that are above the age of 35, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Or maybe some of the, the, you that are uh, even older, maybe baby boomers. This, this, look at this. Let's watch this one. Talking about their Glock. So they're in there doing TikTok videos, dancing around of them stealing from Walmart. And like no one's stopping them. Again, if you would have done this back when I was a kid, you you just you would have you would have been sent to the hospital. Forget uh, you would have wished the cops would have shown up because the cops would have prevented you from all the other customers beating the hell out of you. And not only that, they're posting it up on TikTok. I mean, th again, think of, of the moral decline here. And now they go into uh, this, which is just staggering. This is Walmart. But what we're seeing here, let me go over to this uh, go simple Google search I just did here. And I did a search of a Target shoplifting. And look at these articles. Look at these headlines, guys. One day ago, people love stealing stuff from Target. Target expects $1.3 billion hit, like we just talked about. Target expands locked merchandise cases to hit back at shoplifting. So you know how, like, in the past, like, the expensive razors and whatnot, they would ha uh, have behind that case where you had to get them to open it up with a lock? Now it looks like 
Target is thinking about expanding this to everything. And then we've got San Francisco Target puts entire department on lockdown. Meaning what they're doing in some stores is they're taking all the inventory off of the shelves. They're putting it in the back. And then if you want something, I don't even know how that, I don't know how you know that it's there. Maybe you have to just look it up on your app. Then you have to tell the rep, the representative, and then they go and get it for you because that's the only way they can pre prevent all these thugs and criminals from coming, coming in and stealing all the stuff and, and being, uh, not only being uh, rewarded for it, but also gaining views on TikTok and making ad revenue from this. Josh, why don't you tell your personal story of how you just went back to Boston? Yeah, but I, I got here and I had to go to, I went to some store with uh, uh, my girlfriend and it was some stupid makeup store because I was getting something for my mother. And, and that's well, exactly like Sephora or something, right? One of those, yeah. And exactly what you were talking about. They didn't have any products on the shelves at all and i was like what the hell is going on well we're at a store right now and, and you're just you're just looking at the pictures of it and then right underneath it there would be like a, a grab card which you would take if you wanted the product so oh, okay. when we got what we wanted we grabbed the card and we went to the cashier and said hey like this is what we want and then they went to the back grabbed it and brought it back and then i was talking to the lady for a while kind of asking how long they've been doing this and why and they said right. just because everything was getting stolen and then more importantly, when someone did want to buy something, they didn't have it in stock because usually the way that they would bring in new product would be they sold it and then they would realize, wow, I guess people like this product. Therefore, we're going to continue to sell more. But they wouldn't know what products people like because they would just steal it and then no one would be able to buy it. Yeah. So they're, they're so basically they're, uh, the software, the program they had for inventory would get completely skewed because they didn't know if the inventory was being purchased or if the inventory was being stolen. Yeah, and it's not just stealing that's that's an issue. I mean, George, we've been here for maybe two weeks, and I, me and you have both seen incredibly weird experiences with yeah. just, just the people in America that I haven't experienced in the past three months living in Columbia. Yeah, I mean, you were up in Massachusetts, but at Rebel Capitalist Live when I was there, the day after I went down to do a podcast with Patrick Bet David. Uh, and if you guys haven't seen that, it was a great interview, a lot of fun. But uh, we're in Fort Lauderdale with your good buddy PJ, who's doing the vlogging. And we actually have this on tape. So if you guys aren't subscribed to the vlog, uh, the new one we just set up is George Gammon Vlogs. You definitely want to do that. We'll be uploading a lot more of these videos that we're talking about in the future. But we, we almost got in a fight. We almost got accosted at uh, Walmart. We were there just buying some sunscreen and a couple things. And this guy that was just completely whacked out on drugs. I mean, he was just, you could tell he was just high as a kite. Uh, basically was almost ready to fight PJ. I mean, in, in a Walmart. And we saw almost the same thing happen when we went to the gas station. I mean, it was, it was just, it was something out of like Grand Theft Auto. But it, yet it was like real life. And uh, there are some other things that I wrote down too. Like I said, I have the ability to go back to the United States once every, let's say, uh, six months or so, so I can see these dramatic changes happening when I don't think a lot of Americans really realize it. And then if you live in rural areas, I'm sure you're like, hey, George, my area is fine. Yeah, in Sandpoint, Idaho, I'm sure you're, you're great. But if you go into these urban areas, I mean, they are turning into a flat out war zone. And it's not that they're just turning into a war zone, that the people are changing. The, one of the, and I wrote this down here so I wouldn't forget. One of the main things that I noticed is people just look incredibly unhealthy, like, like, like really bizarrely unhealthy. You've either got people that are grossly overweight or you've got people that look like they're anorexic. It's like, there's, there's nothing in between. And even if they are a, a normal weight, they, they just look very drained. They look like they're kind of depressed. It, 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 they look like they're just uh, really struggling psychologically. Whereas you come down to Columbia and it's the complete opposite. Everyone looks like they're always having a good time and enjoying life. Now, I'm not saying Columbia is better, or great, or whatever. But I'm saying this is a, a noticeable different, a difference. Uh, another thing, uh, uh, as far as personal freedom and liberty, I've noticed that everything is an app. Everything. At, to the point where I was joking with some of my employees 
that if you had $20,000 in cash in your back pocket, I don't think you you could survive in the United States. Now, I say that kind of jokingly, but almost every place we went, you had to have an app or you had to have a, a, a debit card or something, like checking the hotel. You can't use cash, okay? Uh, going to a restaurant, you you can't use cash. You know, you have to download their app. We even went to Top Golf. I took my employees there to show them what that, you know, my Colombian employees. What'd you have to do? You had to have your cell phone on you at all times. They had to text you uh, through the app or whatever it was to let you know that your station was available. It's, it's like you can't live right now in the United States without a cell phone. You can't live just if you had, again, no cell phone and just $20,000 in your back pocket. I don't know that you could even survive. And I think it's going to get far worse in the next, who knows, three to five years. Uh, another thing that I noticed is when you walk down the street, uh, everyone is on their phone at all times. I mean, I don't know that people even ha have looked up for maybe years on end. It's like they go there entire. We're going to somehow evolve as a species to go back to like a chimpanzee. And what I mean by that is we're, we're going to go back to, <laughs> to a, a, a time when we're getting closer and closer and closer to walking on all fours. Why do I say this? Because people are just constantly staring at their phone. And again, this is something you just think it's normal. It's not. This is not normal. Like you come to Columbia, you don't see that. Sure, people have cell phones, but they're not just constantly staring at it. I mean, you go through an airport in the United States and, and it's just, and you guys know what I'm talking about. And my issue there, as far as freedom and liberty, is they're just conditioning you. Now, whether it's intentional or not, it doesn't matter. The net effect is the same. They're, the people are being conditioned to constantly have their cell phone on them. And this gives a megalomaniac, a sociopath, a, an authoritarian, central planner that gets in charge. It gives them the ability to track you wherever you go. And you're not going to have a choice because you're going to be so damn addicted to your stupid cell phone that you can't even live without it. And it gets to the point where even if you know that it's going to be detrimental to your freedom and liberty, you're still going to use that phone because you've ingrained it into your daily routine. It's, it's not even a phone. It's, it's, it's like a, a, an extension of your brain. I, I mean, this is not healthy, guys. Let me keep going. We were talking about how people are unhealthy. So my flight, I believe this was the flight from, uh, I think it was from Nashville down to uh, Miami when I was coming back to Medellin. We actually, they actually had to kick people off the plane. Why? Now, not, I shouldn't say that, N not kick people off the plane, but they had to, uh, you know, when they announced beforehand that the flight is overbooked, and therefore, they they offer to give people a free ticket or something like that if they go on to the next flight. Well, they had to do that for this flight, but it wasn't because they're overbooked. No, 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 no. It was because they exceeded their weight limit. Think about this, guys. Think about this. The plane, it wasn't full or over. It, it, it had capacity as far as number of seats, but they still... <laughs> had to offer people tickets because everyone on the plane combined total was so fat that the plane was unsafe to fly. Uh, this is the direction America is headed. I, I mean, or George, what about when we were at Disneyland walking back up to the terminal where they take you to the front gate and there's a guy saying, congratulations after you walked up those steps. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that goes to another point that I had written down, and this, I, I I don't think Americans realize this because you don't leave the United States. But this is another thing that I just was like, whoa, 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 whoa. We went to Disney World. We go to. I was at Walmart. I was just going around doing stuff in the United States, and everywhere I went, you see people in these electric scooters. 
Like, like guys, that that's you might think that just everyone in the world is just traveling around in these electric scooters. No, 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 no. You go to a grocery store here in Medellin, you're not seeing people go around in electric scooters. You go to the airport, that this do, this doesn't happen. And you say, oh, George, well, maybe these people were 400 pounds. Maybe, but or maybe they were 90 years old or something. No, 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 no. A lot of these people that I see with these scooters at the grocery store or Walmart or Disney World or whatever, these are people that they're like normal. Like they're overweight, of course, but not to the point where they couldn't walk. And a lot of them were younger in their 30s and 40s. Were they disabled? No, they're just lazy. They're mentally disabled, that's for sure. But Americans have got to the point where they're actually proud of how lazy they are. And I mean, again, you go back to when we were growing up in that, like my father is an example. You know, he was 92 when he passed away in 2005. And, you know, my father toward the end of it, he was very, very healthy, but toward the end of his life, you know, he had a little bit of a hard time walking. He had to walk with a, a cane and whatnot, you know, when he got into his 90s. And I tell you what, if you would have gone to a grocery store with my father when he was 90, 91 and said, hey, dad, you want to just ride this electric cart? It'll be a lot easier. He would have punched you in the face. I mean, literally. Like, like you couldn't do anything to offend him more. There is no, it, it, he could have, he would rather crawl than reduce his pride to a level to where he's going to go around and, and shop in some sort of electric cart. That was the attitude that people had. And that was the attitude that, that I just thought was normal, especially for guys. That You've got that sense of pride, that sense of ego, healthy ego. To be like, I'll be damned. If I'm going to drive around on one of these stupid carts, no, 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 no. I may have a bad knee. I may be overweight, but I, no way. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it on my own. But now it's the complete opposite where people are, oh, hey, I can ride around in this scooter and I don't have to walk and everyone can see how lazy I am. Oh, yeah. And I can get away with it. Yeah. Why not put that on TikTok along with all my, shop uh, well all my shoplifting and that'll get a ton of views and everyone will tell me how great I am I mean it's completely tipped upside down and so then you have to ask yourself how is this going to get better or you have to ask yourself how did this happen to begin with right and every single thing that created this environment in the United States if you look at what's happening in the economy if you look at how the government is most likely going to respond to the next, next recession. They're going to do more and more and more. They're, they're going to implement bigger and bigger, more and more policies that created this problem to begin with. And that's why I titled this video, Shocking Evidence of U.S. Decline. And it is, and for those of you who say, oh, George, it's not that big of a deal. No, leave the country for a year and come back. And then you'll be doing the exact same video. In fact, you'll, you'll pr I'm probably understating it based on what you would do. <laughs> and now you know why I'm saying that I believe this social unrest is going to get worse. And I think that this may be a bigger problem than the, F than the economic difficulties that the United States faces in the next, call it year, two, three years. Crazy stuff, guys. Crazy times we live in. All right. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. As always, make sure that you're standing up for freedom, liberty, free market, capitalism. We'll see you in the next video.